Finally, turn off your cell phone if you have cell phone. You don't want to talk on the cell phone during class. The reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, 5th Canto, Chapter 6, Text Number 1. And this is a prose verse, so we can recite it spontaneously. I'll just read the verse and then you can re repeat the word for word. Raju Vacha Na Nunam Bhagavad. Atmananam Yoga Smitya Smita Smirita Gyanaba Jata Karma Bhajan Ashvari Ashyani Una Klesha di Babitam Arhati Yachin Chapo Chayo Pangatani Word for word, Raju Vacha. King Parikshit inquired, not, not, Nunam, indeed, Bhagavad, almost powerful Sukadeva Swami, Amaramanam, a pure devotee simply engaged in devotional service. Yoga Smirita Achieved by practice of yoga Jnana By knowledge Avabharjita Burned Karma Bijanam Those who see the fruit of activities Aishvaryani the mystic powers, Unaha, again, Veshadani, source of distress, Bhavitam, to become, Arati, are able, Yadrichaya, automatically, Upaganati, Translation, purported by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta, Srila Prabhupada. <clears throat> King Parikshik asked Sukhidev Goswami, My dear Lord, for those who are completely pure in heart, knowledge attained by the practice of Bhakti Yoga, and attachment for fruitive activities is completely burned to ashes. For such people, the power of mystic yoga automatically arises. They do not cause distress. Why then did Rishabdev neglect them? Purported by Srila Prabhupada. <clears throat> A pure devotee is constantly engaged in the service of the Supreme Personality Godhead. Whatever is necessary for the discharge of devotional service is automatically attained, though it may appear to be the results of mystic power. Sometimes a yogi displays a little mystic power by manufacturing gold. A little quantity of gold captivates foolish people. Thus the yogi gets many followers who are willing to accept such a tiny person as the Supreme Personality Godhead. Such a yogi may also advertise himself as Bhagavan. However, a devotee does not have to exhibit such magical wonders. Without practicing the mystic yoga process, he achieves even greater opulence all over the world. Under the circumstances, Lord Rishabde refused to make manifest mystic yoga perfection. And Maharaj Bhikti asked why he did not accept them, since for a devotee they are not at all disturbing. A devotee is never distressed or satisfied by material opulence. His concern is how to please the Supreme Personality Godhead. If by the grace of the Supreme Lord, a devotee achieves extraordinary opulence, 
He utilized the opportunity for the Lord's service. He's not disturbed by the opulence. Om Ajnana Tarandasya Jana Jana Shlakaya Sakshuri Jena Tazme Shri Gurve Namaha Shri Shaitanya Namarobi Stam Stapitam Jena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadame Nam Nanti Sam Nanti Kam Pandayam Shri Guru Shri Yata Parakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shri Shri Rupam Lagaritam Sahagana Raganatam Tam Sanjeeva Sadvaitam Sabamitam Prijana Saita Krishna Shaitanya Devam Shri Vara Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Nidam Cha Hare Krishna Karun the Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jigapade Gopisha Gopikanta Radha Kanta Nosute Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radha Vrindam and Easter Ray Vishabandhu Sute Devi Priyamani Ripaye Manchakopa Trivia Sha Kripa Sindhu Eva Cha Padam Padme O Vaishnavi O Namon Maha Shri Krishna Shaitanya Prabhu Nitsananda Shri Adreta Garada Shri Vasudev Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Translation once again King Pritchard asks Sukadev Goswami My dear Lord for those who are completely pure in heart knowledge is attained by the practice of bhakti yoga and attachment for food of activities is completely burned to ashes. For such people, the powers of mystic yoga automatically arise. They do not cause stress. Why then did Rishabdev neglect them? So this is a <coughs> continuation of the narration of the activities of Lord Rishabdev. And this verse is, uh, <coughs> is also uh, in the last chapter, the purport. Prabhupada says, Lord Rishabdev, being a plenary expansion of the Lord Vasudev, Lord Rishabdev possessed all these mystic powers but he was satisfied with devotional love of Krishna, which was invinced by the ecstatic symptoms, just crying, laughing, and shivering. Therefore, <clears throat> he chose not to exhibit ecstatic symptoms or mystic powers. So here it says, by knowledge, for those who are completely pure at heart, knowledge is attained by the practice of bhakti yoga. So Lord Titania said, Vairagya Vijaya Nijaya Bhakti Yoga. But the definition of knowledge is to know the difference between matter and spirit and the controller of both. This is also known as Sambandhan Gyan. If one <clears throat> understand his relationship with Krishna, then he will not be interested in fruitive activities or mystic power. Anyabila Sita Sunya Jnana Karmaka Armitam Anukalena Krishna Shno Bhakta Uttamam. This is the definition of pure devotional service given by Rupa Goswami in the Nectar of Devotion. So by performing pure devotional service, <clears throat> one is, it says all the reactions to one's fruit of activities is burnt or ashes. So if you take a seed, a seed, any kind of seed, and you plant it into the ground, it will grow immediately if you water it properly. But if you take that seed and you put it in a pot in a, in a karai and you, and you roast it, then if you put it in the ground, it will not grow. It will stop its ability to grow. So in the same way, 
by taking the Krishna consciousness, we are burning to ashes, we're burning up our karma, our desire for fruit of activities. Bhukti Mukti, it's considered two witches for devotees. Bhukti and Mukti, liberation, or desire for uh, material sense gratification. They're not uh, welcomed by the devotee. The, as a matter of fact, liberation stands with folded hands in, at the feet of a pure devotee. So, Lord Vishavadev was a Vishnu Tapa expansion of the Lord, expansion of Asudev. And but he chose not to accept mystic powers or to exhibit these uh, these powers that he had. Of course, he's being Vishnu Tapa. He didn't have a material body. His body was made of Satchitananda, Vigraha. His body was eternally full of knowledge and bliss. Therefore, uh, it says that he, his mystic powers, the idea of mystic powers came in his mind, but he rejected it. But he wasn't an ordinary conditioned soul. So he didn't uh, have to be fearful of... Uh, falling into Maya, like, uh, <clears throat> like those who are practicing Krishna Consciousness. Rupa Goswami describes the process of devotional service, sadhana bhakti, it's divided in two parts, vaidhi bhakti and raga, raga bhakti. Sometimes Prabhupada would say vidhi bhakti. So Vaidhi Bhakti means we, we have to follow the rules and regulations given by the spiritual master. It says one should accept the spiritual master, Do Guru Ashraya, this beginning of our Krishna consciousness. Tadvidi Paripatana Paripasana Sevaya Upitek Jyanti Kya Gyanas Kyanas Tapa Tarchanaha. One should accept the spiritual match, inquire from him, render service unto him. He can impart knowledge unto you because he's seen the truth. <clears throat> so this is the required that we have take diksha and that uh, we make a vow to chant Daily 16 rounds of the Ma Mantra Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare And we follow the four regulated principles No meeting, no gambling, no intoxication, no illicit sex And by doing this Especially with great care and attention Then <clears throat> it keeps us on the spiritual platform in Prabhupada's house every day they put a different letter. Prabhupada wrote over 700, well, I'm not sure how many, many letters. He had 700 lectures, but I don't know how many letter, letter book you can read. Prabhupada's letters. In all Prabhupada's letters, he's stressing over and over again that you are doing nice service, whatever it may be, but you must strictly follow these two principles. Chant 16 rounds daily and follow the four regular principles. So otherwise, that's our, uh, <clears throat> that's our medicine. If one is in a disease condition, he goes to the doctor, he has to take the medicine just to, keep, to get well, to stay well. So we have to take the medicine, chant 16 rounds, follow the four regular principles, take Krishna Prasadam, all these things are included in the nectar devotion. There are 64 items that are straight out there. We should also follow all those 64 items. So the pure devotee uh, uses everything in Krishna's service. If he has mystic power, 
He may use it for, or may not use it. In case of Srila Prabhupada, he was asked by a reporter, can you show me some magic? And Prabhupada pointed to his fledgling disciples that this is my magic. Also, some witness, some devotees witnessed that Prabhupada would go on a morning walk and when he was on the morning walk, it, it was in the, on the beach or somewhere where the ground was wet. And naturally, when you go on a walk on wet surface, sand or mud, you leave footprints. But some devotees saw that Prabhupada didn't leave any footprints. And Rabindra Sarup Prabhu, when he was going to school, at Penn State University, he saw Prabhupada from a distance and he <coughs> was quite amazed to see this man was glowing, Prabhupada was glowing. So Prabhupada didn't exhibit his mystic power. He had the mystic powers were there, but he didn't he chose not to exhibit them openly because he knew that by exhibiting mystic powers, one can get many followers. In the time of Bhaktivinoda Kaur, there was one bhikshu, one person who called, was claiming he was the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And he was taking advantage of women and doing all magic tricks to lure people, making him believe that he was the Supreme the Supreme Personality got it. The Bhaktivinoda Thakur was a district magistrate and he knew that this man was a cheater and it wasn't possible for him to be the Supreme Personality got it. So he arrested this man and put him in jail. And then the, by his power, he had mystic power and the whole, whole family, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, the whole family became deathly ill deathly sick. But then they took this man to court <clears throat> and the one of the lawyers knew the secret to his power. And the power was in his hair. So somehow or other they cut the hair off this man, Yogi, and that was the end of Mahavishnu. He lost all his power and they put him in jail. He died in jail. So he's definitely an imposter, cheater. Even in the time when Lord Krishna was on the planet, one devotee, one person named Pundraka, he was, <clears throat> he sent a messenger to Krishna in the assembly house in Dwarka. He said, I am the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And I hold the four symbols, club, disc, conch, lotus. So you should, and you're holding the four symbols. So <clears throat> since you are the fake Krishna, you're the fake Vasudev, I'm the real Vasudev. So you should surrender your symbols unto me. So the people in the assembly in Dwarka, they laughed at that for a very long time. And then Krishna told the messenger, you tell your Pundraka that I will surrender my disc weapon to his head. <laughs> so then Krishna came out of Dwarka, went to the city of Kashi, <coughs> and he met this Pundraka on the battlefield. Bhunaka had dressed himself like Mahavishnu. He had four arms, the Staba jewel, he had helmet, dhoti, silk dhoti. He looking like Mahavishnu, but actually it was a cheap imitation. And Krishna saw Pundraka, immediately took out his chakra and cut off his head. Then they <coughs> 
So this is an example of people who can get mystic powers and can cheat foolish people, have many followers. Pundraka had many followers. The king of Kashi was also a follower of Pundraka. And Krishna cut off his head also. And they threw his head, the king's head, into the city. And the people saw this head flying in the city. First they, they speculated, they thought maybe this must be Krishna's head. But then they examined more closely and they saw it was the king's head. So the king had a son who wanted to take revenge. So he called some tantric, some brahmins to perform uh, tantric uh, mystic power. And they created a fiery demon who had three heads and three legs and sent him to Dwarka to burn the city down. But then Krishna sent his Shurjan Chakra to stop that demon and send him back to Kashi or Renaris. He sent him back and they, <clears throat> because when you when you send someone to, to perform some mis, mis, you send a, someone to perform some activity, a demon or a rakshash or whatever he was, because he didn't uh, hit the target, he has to come back and, and kill the people that, that sent him. So the, the, uh, the uh, demon was, did that. He went back to Kashi, killed the son of, of King Kashi and all the Brahmins who were involved in the sacrifice. And the Shurjan Chakra destroyed the whole city of Kashi. <clears throat> so, uh, there are many people, imposters, who call themselves Bhagavan. Someone like Sai Baba, he would he could produce some gold in his hand to attract many followers. The Prabhupada said, but <clears throat> if he can produce gold in his hand, why does he have to have an incense business? <laughs> so the <clears throat> the uh, incarnations of the Lord are coming like the waves in the ocean. There are many different kinds of incarnations. There's the uh, Yuga avatar, Lila avatar, Mangala avatar, Purusha avatar. And the prominent ones, they're, all, they're, all, they're mentioned in the scriptures who is a real incarnation of the Lord. It's, it gives us describes what his father's name is, what village he's from, and what his activities will be. So it's not even the many so-called incarnations in South India, some, one man's claiming to be the Kalki avatar. But we know that's not possible. Kalki the avatar doesn't come to the end of Kali Yuga. And he comes riding on a white horse and kills all the demoniac, demoniac kings. And this is called Kaitava Dharma. They're cheating, cheating religions. Mystic power, showing mystic power, and cheating religions. The whole world is going on because of, the, of these things. Cheating religions and <clears throat> uh, people calling themselves God. Vishri Gorni Thai, Krishna Bhavan Rana Shama Sundar Ki Jai. So, Lord Titania came 500 years ago and we know by reading Chaitanya Tartamrita, Chaitanya Bhagavat, Chaitanya Mangala, that Lord Chaitanya was 
not other than the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radhe Krishna Nahayaya. He's the combined form of Radha and Krishna. But he, he came as Bhakti avatar. He came in the role, to play the role of a devotee. So sometimes they would call him the Supreme Personality God and, and he would block his ears. He'd say, oh, no, I'm not, the, I'm a Jiva. You shouldn't call me the Supreme Personality God. And. This is Mayavadi philosophy. Mayavadis, they want to uh, become God and they say everyone is God, we're all God. In my eyes, they address themselves, Om Namo Narayan. You're God, I'm God, everyone is God. But the, by definition, God means the one supreme person, no one's equal to or greater than. Ishvara Parma Krishna Satchirananda Vigraha Nandiyadi Govindam Sarakar Karanam. He's the cause of all causes. Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam. The Krishna, so, we read earlier in this last chapter how his father, Lord Rishabhadev, he wanted the Supreme Personality God had his Lord to come as his son. But since no one can take that role, no one can be the Supreme Personality God, only Krishna can become someone, only God can become someone's son. So Lord Vishavadev agreed to become this, his son. So after being in his household life, retiring from household life, Lord Vishavadev addressed, adopted the, uh, <clears throat> uh, the activities of an avadut. An avadut is someone who is uh, spiritually advanced and free from, uh, who doesn't have to follow any rules and regulations. Free from Vanashram Dharma, free from the rules and regulations. And it says because Vrishabhadev was a pure devotee, being a planetary expansion of Lord Vasudev, he possessed all mystic powers, but he was satisfied with devotional love for Krishna, which was convinced by the exact symptoms crying, laughing, shivering. So this is, the, <coughs> is uh, what the we devotees are ex aspiring for, pure devotional service. We don't, uh, someone may get mystic powers, someone may get opulences. These things can spoil one's devotional service. Warning, nectar devotion, that one should not take too many followers or accumulate ma large sums of money because this spoils one's devotional service. So the whole idea is to become detached from material life and become attached to the loving service of the Lord. Vyamdhisvarani Vartante. Because the devotee has a higher taste, he's not interested in lower taste mystic power, he's not interested in, in that, any of these things, mystic power or even liberation, but he, we don't, he wants to just simply engage in the service of the Lord. So sometimes devotees do get opulence, but if <clears throat> generally Krishna doesn't give opulence to someone if it's going to be cause them to fall, leave Krishna consciousness. Sudama Brahman, he was a very poor Brahman. So his wife asked him to go to his friend Lord Krishna. But he, and she, she thought that Lord Krishna would, would, would improve their situation. They were so poor, they didn't have proper clothes, they didn't have proper food. So Sadama Brahman didn't want to ask anything from Krishna, but he went to Krishna and when he came back to his village, he, had re he received more opulence than the king of heaven. 
and his body changed and his wife's body changed. They became beautiful and healthy. Before that, they were lean and thin. They were shivering for want of food. But because Sudama Brahma was a pure devotee, he, didn't, he wasn't disturbed by these things. The devotee is not disturbed by happiness or distress. He sees it all as the arrangement of the Lord. And Sudama Brahma later became Sukhambar Brahmachari in Lord Chaitanya and Gaur Lila. Same thing with Bali Maharaj. Bali Maharaj was ruling the, all, all the heavenly planets. And Bhamadev came to him and asked for three steps of land. Now, Bali Maharaj said, this is not a very intelligent request. I can give you so much opulence. But Bhamadev said, no, I just want three steps of land. But Bali Maharaj's spiritual master, Sukhacharya, said, don't give him anything because he's Vishnu. He'll take everything, then I won't get my maintenance. So Bali Maharaj, he rejected the order of his spiritual master. But uh, Bhamadev awarded him a position on the lower Tutala planet and gave him more opulence than the king of heaven. And Bhamadev became his doorman. But again, he was not disturbed by material opulence. Continued to in his practice of Krishna consciousness. And Srila Prabhupada also was given so much opulence. But he, he didn't become proud is the uh, Prabhupada, they would arrange for big cars for Prabhupada and the people in the material world were envious and they'd uh, often inquire, you're the spiritual leader of this movement, you're supposed to be materially renounced, why are you riding into big cars? And Prabhupada said that this is not anything special, these cars are just uh, iron, steel, plastic. The spiritual master should have a gold car. But uh, probably accepted these things because the devotees were offered, they offered to him with love and devotion. But he didn't become proud that I'm now a big guru and have all these things. He stayed firm in his Krishna consciousness, firmly fixed in devotional service. The devotee doesn't have false ego. You know, the ten offenses to chain the holy name. And the tenth offense is to not to maintain material attachments even after understanding so many instructions on the subject matter. So maintaining material attachments means thinking I, me, mine. That, that this, that everything, this belongs to me, this is mine, this is me, I, me, mine. So we have to uh, be a surrendered soul and give up this, this consciousness that I, me, mine. And to humble me, that I, me, spirit, soul, and that they do, no. Diversaruva and Nitya Krishna Das, eternal service to Krishna. And nothing in this real material world is permanent. I may have a car, I may have a house, I may have so many things. A cell phone, this, that. But that those things are given to us. Nirbandhan Krishna Stambhande Yukta Vairagi Ujite. Not that we reject, we don't reject. Prabhupada said the mystic yogis, the Mayavadis, when someone also wants to offer them some money or something, they go like this, but we go like this. Because <laughs> we can utilize everything in Krishna's service, not for our sense gratification. If we misuse what is meant for Krishna, if we misuse things that are meant for those service, then that will 
uh, be detrimental to our devotional service. Krishna says, Patram Pushpam Paloto Yom Yome Bhakti Priyachati. If one offers me leaf, flower, water, with love and devotion, I accept. So this is what Krishna is wanting from us. This was Rishabhde mood was simply to engage in loving devotional service. He had no uh, need for mystic power, even though it automatically aro arise, arose in him, in his mind. It said mystic power arose in his mind, but he was not disturbed by it, and he didn't uh, think necessary to display mystic powers. <clears throat> So, uh, the only business is to please Krishna, Samsidhi Hari Toshana. All our activities are centered around this one principle of pleasing Krishna. And the foremost of all instructions is to always think of Krishna and never forget him. But Krishna is never alone. It's like when the king comes, when, he, the king, when you hear the king is coming, you know, He's not coming alone. He brings his secretary, his ministers, his guards, everything. Even a big man in any country, he never comes, goes anywhere alone. So Krishna's never without, without Radharani, without the gopis, engaging loving affairs in, the, in Vrindavan. So to think of Krishna, <clears throat> and never forget him, means to think of Krishna's pastimes. Krishna's name, form, quality, pastimes. This is wanted. We should be absorbed ourselves in hearing and chanting about the name, form, quality, pastimes of Krishna and his devotees. It says that Krishna is on every page of Srimad Bhagavatam. The Srimad Bhagavatam is a spotless Purana. Therefore, we're hearing, every day we're hearing about from the stream of Bhagavatam, Nasta Prayashu Abdeshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Some professional re people, they're professional Bhagavatam reciters who do seven days Bhagavata Saptaha. But this is not approved by the Acharyas. It says Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Bhagavatam should be heard regularly on a daily basis, not just for seven days. And People who recite Bhagavatam for seven days, they make a very good uh, show. People are uh, attracted, but they don't change people's hearts. The whole idea of hearing Bhagavatam is to change the heart, make the heart soft, so we can develop our love for Krishna. And also, it's an offense to recite Bhagavatam for money, for remuneration. A person reciting Bhagavatam must be free from a haitaki or pratiyata, unmotivated, must be unmotivated and uninterrupted in his devotional service. This is the offense. One in Jaiva Dharma, one person was reciting Bhagavatam for money, it was his livelihood. And as Guru Maharaj said, you, should, you have to stop this. Because this is an offense. So, <clears throat> the person reciting Bhagavatam must be unmotivated, only for the sake of glorifying the Lord, glorifying the Lord's devotees, should one recite Bhagavatam. Not for some material benefit. Then the fruit will be there. Then the message can penetrate the heart, can... Uh, purify the conditioned souls. So that's what we want. And it's Christian, we're uh, following Lord to the footsteps of the six Goswamis. The six Goswamis, they kicked off all aristocracy. They had boatloads of gold. Rupa and Sanatana Goswami had boatloads of gold and silver. They gave, they gave up everything, took up the cloth, dressed of mendicants. And they were meek and humble. And they spent their time uh, hearing and chanting in the in Vrindavan. 
So we should follow in the footsteps of the six Goswamis. We can't imitate them. Six Goswamis were very, uh, lived very austere lives. They only slept a few hours a day, only ate a very little bit. Raghunath Das Goswami, he took a cup of chacht, buttermilk, every other day. But we can't do that. We can't imitate. But we can follow their example by uh, only eating Krishna prasadam, only hearing Krishna kata, only engaging in devotional service, especially in Vrindavan. In other places in the world, chanting is difficult to chant after in the daytime becomes more difficult. The modes of nature are very heavy. In Vrindavan, one can chant. You don't have to stop at 16 rounds. You can chant 32 rounds, 64 rounds. Whatever time you have, you can ch chant more. Whatever time you have, you can read Srila Prabhupada's books. Especially Srila Bhagavatam, Shaitanya Charitamrita, and the Krishnadas Kaviraj says we should also uh, he is glorifying Vrindavan Das Thakur for he was the incarnation of Yasudev who wrote Chaitanya Bhagavat. So we should also read Chaitanya Bhagavat, hear the pastimes of the Lord. And this will keep us uh, free from the contamination of material nature. Material energy is very strong. But those who surrender unto Krishna, easy cross beyond it. So we should <coughs> always be surrendered souls and we always be trying to act in such a way which is pleasing to Krishna, pleasing to the Guru. Yasha Prasada, Bhagavad Prasada, Yasha Prasada, Narakindu Gopi. If the Guru is pleased, Krishna is pleased. If Krishna is pleased, the Guru is pleased. So we have to work in such a way to please the spiritual master by uh, not engaging in activities which are uh, detrimental to our devotional service. So this way, uh, we should accept which is favorable and reject which is unfavorable. And the next few verses is describing the nature of the mind, how we have to be careful not to listen to our minds. The mind is the best of friends, the worst of enemies. If we listen, if we listen to our mind, we we will uh, may get in trouble and, and may uh, not be able, not fail to follow strictly the principles of devotional service. So. Uh, <clears throat> Good Prabhupada writes in this verse, Bhakti Yoga, knowledge is attained by the practice of Bhakti Yoga. <coughs> so there's other, many kinds of yogas, Hatha Yoga, and, but the real yoga, it means to link with Krishna, to revive our loving devotional service to Krishna. This is real yoga. Nothing Sure, nothing else should be as, in, as important as this is the goal. And the gopis of Vrindavan, Lord Titania, was a sannyasi. He didn't have, he was very strict. He never associated with women. They only, they could pay obeisances to him from a distance. One time, these, <clears throat> he heard some singing. He started running. And his servant, Govinda, stopped him. He said that it is a lady singing. So, oh, you saved my life. If I had gone there and touched that woman, I would have been ruined. But Lord Titania also proclaimed that the highest form of devotional service is the service of the gopis in Vrindavan. The gopis were young, beautiful girls, dressed themselves very beautifully. They Everything they did was only to please Krishna. The Rasalila, Krishna performed his Rasalila in Vrindavan. 